Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of uh, Frank and Mary in Westboro. If you saw the show last month, you know my, my good friend Shelby Marshall and I are the co-hosts. Yes. And the point of this show is to give you folks who are seniors or working a lot with seniors as good a sense as possible as of all of the programs that are available that help seniors here, the people that you need to know here if you're a senior, and also to talk a little bit about the future and kind of what you what could be here in the future. And Shelby had said, oh, you've got to meet the fire chief. They're doing, they're doing this wonderful program, which has been going for uh, a while here, which was really exciting. I think Shelby's going to take it from sure. here. But I know from as an outlander, I said to myself, this is something that just should be everywhere. This is the kind of thing that we want to be featuring because we want other towns to be and cities to be seeing it. Absolutely. Well, happy to be Shelby. here again. Happy to be here. And I have with me, with us, Chief Purcell. Thank, thank you for having me. Thank you so much for coming today. Uh, so you are a member of our uh, Dementia Friendly Initiative team. Yes. Uh, you and several members of your, your team. Um, and there are a number of things that the fire department uh, has already been engaged with really almost sort of started slightly ahead of, I think, the Dementia Friendly Initiative. Um, and, uh, um, but we'd like to talk to you about those today. All right. So, um, so um, oh, can I ask, yes. by the way, oh, sure. as, just sorry. as an outlander, so Chief, kind of what's your, how long have you been here? Are you, are you a local guy? Are you from uh, Mars? So, are you from, no. <laughs> no, so I, uh, I live in the town of Sutton. Yeah. I'm uh, married, I have three daughters. Yeah. Uh, I've been the fire chief for coming up on three years now, yeah. and I've been employed by the town of Westboro in the capacity of a firefighter or uh, an officer there yeah. uh, for about 20 years. Oh, that's great. <clears throat> that's great. Yeah. I was just curious. I yeah, didn't mean no, to interrupt. No, no, no. Yeah. That's always yeah. important to know yeah. who our guests yeah. are other than yeah. the yeah. uniform Yeah, because yeah, you, you all know. You right, know, right, right. Absolutely. So, um, so one of the things I'd love to you know, have you just kind of talk about what are the a couple programs that um, are working on the, you know, tools, utilities, and maybe we'll start with, are you okay? Does that make sense? Sure. Uh, one thing I, I'll hit on that you, you brought up is tr trying to be ahead. Uh, so that's one thing that my department strives for. We try to be a little bit ahead of what we anticipate to be coming. Mm -hmm. So when we did a and little bit of- And we're coming, Chief. Yeah, yeah, and you're coming. Me and my old friends, we're coming. Right? <laughs> in droves. So we, in droves. None of, us can get a, none of us can get ahead of that. But, That's right. You know, That's right. You'll um, be here Sunday, too. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure. So uh, what, what we did is we did a little bit of research, and we read through uh, Governor Baker's and Lieutenant uh, Governor Polito's uh, initiatives, and we read how uh, the Health and Human Services, that they were really focused on the aging population, particularly making communities dementia-friendly. And through that, there was uh, one of the models that they used was to, uh, you know, review policies and uh, for several things, and one of them was for public safety. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so when we started to look ahead of that, I was I was pleased to see that uh, some representation from my department on a volunteer uh, part uh, was made to the dementia friendly community, oh, yeah. and we started learning a little bit about that, and uh, we had some training offered to us. Uh, all of the employees at the fire department went through it, and it was really an eye opener. Because really what it boiled down to is we were dealing with people that suffer from dementia on a daily basis, but we never really thought about it. We just right. did it. Mm -hmm. I know we in also some, in some towns I always hear that referred to as the frequent flyers. Oh God, we went to so it was the frequent, you know, yeah. and yeah. often they're, they're, these are dementia. Problems. Sure. Right. Sure. Well, some of the things that we learned were not only how dementia affects the brain and how it affects the family, but maybe some of the things that we were doing weren't necessarily the best. Like... For instance, transporting everybody to the hospital just because we find them and they're confused and maybe that wasn't the right outlet to solve the problem, mm -hmm. that there were other alternatives. So it'll be part of that solution and to look at the overall mm -hmm. plan for a dementia friendly community. You know, we tied together well with family planning, mm -hmm. faith, uh, wealth management, the banks, communities, business, neighbors, then that the bottom glare on us in the face was emergency response and planning and sure. how the fire department could be part of that. So we evaluated the technologies that we had uh, in the department, and there was several of them. We, we didn't really invent anything new. We just looked at the better, a, way, a way to better use those tools and uh, merge them together into a plan that we think is going to uh, be an asset to the community. Uh, it will be. Yeah, absolutely. It will no, it's be. very, really, very exciting stuff. I mean, that what, is really exciting. What you and yeah. your team are bringing to uh, Westboro that's um, accessible and free yes. um, is, um, you know, could be. Um, not only 
potentially life-saving I view it as, but um, certainly comforting if I'm an adult child and my, my elders are living here in Westboro, that someone's yeah. sort of looking out for them. So. And community building. And that once again, yeah. it's kind of empowering people who are feeling like, on the one hand, they really want to be home, but on the other hand, they're starting to get scared. You know, Right, right. Am I still safe here? Right, yeah. right. So one thing that we looked at, which uh, Shelby just brought up, was the RUOK system, and that, that's one component. And the four components that we merged together include that, uh, our CAD system that police, fire, and EMS use. It's called IMC. Um, mm -hmm. A secure key box system that uh, the fire department and the senior center manage. Mm -hmm. And um, Code Red. Code Red. Yep. It's, a, yep. uh, it's a, an alerting system that we uh, subscribe to uh, for the whole town. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, it's an alerting system where we can branch out and reach anyone in the community at any time, whether it's a general message or an emergency. So, so what's, yeah, what's the best way to like, so, so that our viewers sort of understand it? Like, you know, cause to me, Code Red is sort of like the extreme, right? It like is the, the extreme. You know, so I don't know if it's easier to talk extreme down to sort of every day or what happened? Uh, let's but, go to every day first. Yeah, so okay. you, you brought up, are you okay? So the are you okay system, uh, we had been field testing for the last month. And I think as of yesterday, we have, worked out all of the bugs. And what this program does is enables people to subscribe through us and we would get some general general, general information about the pa the person, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll call it a patient because it's sure. the yeah. fire department yeah. and ambulance yeah. point of view, the patient or the community member, uh, a photograph of them mm -hmm. and some resources that those, pers those people may use or family member, mm -hmm. an outreach service. Sure. Um, a home health aid. Sure. Uh, and so if we find somebody and they're confused and don't know where they live, right. we and, can. Excuse me. And so and so that that information, so that you would actually have on record not only their name and their information, but also like the the contact Peter information. Peter Palmieri. Yes. For, the, for those other people, yep. so that you guys yes. you reach the kids or, or even reach the home care agency. Yeah. Yep. Wow. So yep. when we yeah. we screen people into this program, yeah. we put them into our database. Yeah. And we, we there's some options about what time we call people's homes. Yep. We have a system that's designed to place an automated phone call to whatever number, whether a cell or a landline mm -hmm. uh, that that they choose, mm -hmm. and it will call them every single day at that specific time. At that same time. Yes. It's uh, like a very dedicated daughter. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of daughters that take the, yeah. they have this yeah. job, yeah. right? Yeah, right. but she doesn't have to do it. But she is, right, right, right. right. If she oversleeps, Seriously, right? if she oversleeps, Ma right. doesn't like, right. you know, right. she's going back to work. Oh so my God, you know, yeah. yeah. And we have yeah. safeguards for that, for the oversleeping. Yeah. So, uh, it, if you oversleep and you don't hear the phone, it will call you back on 15 minute uh, inter intervals I three see. times. Mm -hmm. If I the see. phone's busy, it'll call you at 30 minute intervals five times. Mm -hmm. And then Great. beyond that, if you get no response, it uh, trips an alarm in a dispatch center and the dispatchers are great at this. Uh, they'll be able to access all this information. We're mm -hmm. gonna deploy a fire truck, uh, no lights or sirens mm -hmm. uh, to the person's house and uh, you know, we'll be able to determine if they're home or if they're okay. Mm -hmm. And if they're not, uh, if they don't answer a door, we can use the information that we got when they signed up to reach out to some of those resources. Maybe a family member and say, is citizen A on vacation or right. a doctor's appointment or... Right. So that's a good example where, oh, actually she's with me. Mm. I took her to her doctor's appointment. Exactly. We didn't think about that we, we didn't get think a phone call today. That's right. 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 But that's right. So, and you've, I, I know, because we've talked about this, you've tested it. You've actually been getting the... Calls you okay me every calls? day at 1143. <laughs> and, and you recently took a trip and it actually found you on your trip. Yes, right? out of the country. Out of the country. That's great. Yeah. Yes. That's yeah. So, great. I mean, talk about right. reliability, which yes. is great. So, and, and just as a curiosity, are there any other towns you know of around here that are doing this? So I think that they're using parts of the system, but I don't know anybody that's put a formalized program together and yeah. put them all together. Because I've, I've heard of this in some, well, I, I do some work in Nantucket, and in Nantucket they have some, some community volunteers mm -hmm. who will come in and who'll make calls. They'll do, you know, okay. calls, sure, oh, sure. how are you doing, blah, 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 yeah. right? But, what, but that's hard just because everybody's a volunteer, everybody's got a day job. Yep. It's, it's the not, shift doesn't feel get, right. It's yeah, not systematic. It's, it's not systematic. Right. That's right. 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 Just, this just kind of really covers everybody. Right. So, so the next piece to that is, uh, should we go to your house mm -hmm. and nobody answers the door? There has to be a trust level between the fire department and the community member. Uh, they can subscribe to a lockbox mm -hmm. that only the fire department has a key to, and we keep that key secure on our fire truck in a retention system, and everybody has their own code to get that key out. So if somebody takes it out, we, we can track the keys pretty easily. Mm -hmm. What that key does is open up a box on their house. We'll have it mounted wherever they want, and we can gain access to their home. And what we hope to find is 
that they're they're okay or they're not home. Mm -hmm. But yeah. oftentimes, if we use those boxes, we go in. Sometimes people have fallen and they mm -hmm. couldn't get up. Yep. Or they right, or right. couldn't get to the phone. Sure. Right. right. Or they right. have an injury or yep. a hip injury and they, sure. they couldn't get to a telephone or they didn't have their life call button. Right. So, it, it kind of promotes accountability mm -hmm. for them on a day to day basis. That's great. Yeah. And I yeah. love the I love the fact that you know there is uh, assurance and security because no one sort of wants to leave the key under the mat, mm -hmm. right? Because everyone sort of starts to know the keys under the mat. Um, exactly. It also prevents you guys from having to take an axe to a door or whatever it is. I watch too many movies, right? So, but really, before you know, you got to get in to make sure the person's okay. You got a key. It's yeah. going to save an expensive uh, door repair. Yeah, because yeah. you do have to get in. I yeah. mean, that's the bottom Absolutely. line. You have to get. I, right. I always, I always, you know, sometimes I do my my presentations and see, and I say, you know. Did you ever wonder why all those people show up at the door, you know, if you call, right? Yeah. And I said, well, one of the, the fire truck is there because they're the only ones who can legally go through the door without a warrant. They have to be, you know, if it's yeah. an emergency, yeah. they have to be there, right? right? And sure. they have to go through it because it's a safety matter. Right. Absolutely. So to have that key there. Right. Now, so I'm a little slow. T t tell me again how it works. So, if I, so I sign up. So you sign up. And I know, and I get the fact that the, someplace in my house there's a lock, there's a lock box, yep. and I've got the key to my house is in that lock box. So ideally, you know, your yep. your guy goes up to the door and he just. So how does he get access into that lock box again? So on every fire truck, yep. we have we have a retention system. It's electric. Yeah. It's wired to the truck, and you have a there's a punch cat, a punch code. Yeah. So everybody has their own code, and we track those. I see. Your code so would be one when two, I put three, a code four. in, so the yeah, so the code is right goes is for that lock box. Yes, to open that right. in the truck. It's so when I open I it, see. it releases a key. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah which yeah. I use to open the lock box on their yeah. house. And then, and it's all individualized because that that yes. that, that one code. That's the so only we code think about works. even just the cost of kind of fire trucks, right? Right. Like when I mean, that was an additional component that you yeah. guys kind of again thinking ahead of how could you know the truck has to be actually wired yeah. to accommodate kind of yeah. the technology. So. So and there's also so we have. We have redundancy built into a lot of things, so we can't forget the key and we can't lose the key because if you don't put it back, a blue strobe goes off right into the windshield, like on the dashboard the where truck. the windshield is, so we wouldn't drive away and forget it. I get it. Yeah. So oh, that's it's, good. It's really yeah. foolproof. Right? That is really yeah, good. That's yeah, that's fantastic. Really good. Yeah. And and there's no cost for someone to get the lockbox. How would they How would they sign up for I this? I think that there is a small oh, is there cost. A small uh, cost? That's it's usually administered through the senior center. Okay. And I, I would I think it's forty dollars. Okay. For the box, yeah. but yeah. if yeah. we break a door, it's yeah, a lot more. Yeah. Several right. hundred. So someone would just yeah. call the senior center and say, I want to get a lockbox on my house or my mom's house or what have you. And yeah. Yep. Okay. And exactly. you guys, do you guys do the installation or is there like the a The senior company? center does. Yeah. They have a, um, right. they have a worker down there that yeah. goes and helps, helps people with the install. Excellent. That's, Excellent. So that's a great senior center service. Yep. Yes. Yes. Right. Uh, yeah, they really are phenomenal with yeah. it. Yeah. 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 That's great. That's great. So, so the next step involves, uh, it ties back to when we screen people in and we take some info yeah. and we try to we're going to take their photograph mm -hmm. we would take that information that we wrote down and upload that into our the cad system the imc system mm -hmm. and the dispatchers can look at a site file and see everything that's in that site file so we would have their photograph mm -hmm. their next of kin their cell phone number uh, any 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 information they really wanted mm -hmm. to provide us a medical history mm -hmm. medications they may be on and if um, when, when the dispatcher wow, you even have medications. Yes. So if you go in the door and you, and you know that they're in trouble, you actually have a sense of if that person's on right. the floor. Yes, sir. Right. That, wow. Yes. Wow. So when the dispatcher puts gets gets an alarm from are you okay and says they're not responding to their phone call, mm. they would put that call in the CAD system, and the CAD system would then transmit that to the computers in the in the fire truck. And, yeah. and the police car. I was just going to say, you mentioned before, so there's We can send it to all, all public the public safety, safety vehicles. Wow. Yeah. That's fantastic. So what that does is gives us baseline information, somebody to call, mm -hmm. ask medical history, medications, and uh, God forbid they're actually missing a photograph. Because mm -hmm. then we can take that photograph oh, and we right. can use that on social media, uh, Code Red, which we'll talk about yep. next. Yep. Um, Th they can have it on the laptops and all the public safety vehicles, so we can actually have a photograph driving around looking for them. Sure. Right. Sure. So, if you, so if the guy's driving around, there's a stop. Mm. Right. You you can see the person right, right the, away. The old days of giving a description of, right. you know, six foot male, uh, you know, brown hair, blue eyes, That's about two hundred twenty pounds is over. We can actually. That's the old days about lying about your weight. That's oh yeah, right, right. I'm a short. Right. Oh, oh, 170. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just that somebody, one guy I since high school. I'm just part of the conversation. Right. I'm just, I would just, <laughs> just throw that. 
So, so uh, it, it, then to take it fully forward to worst case scenario is we've been unsuccessful locating somebody, public safety vehicles un unsuccessful. We can take that same information into the code into the code red system. Code red is uh, a service that is also the town pays for it, but it's free to the taxpayer uh, to sign up, and they would get emergency notifications from the fire department. And it's it's not only used for for this; it can be used for anything. If there's a hazardous materials incident, missing person, yeah. uh, any any message delivery that we need to get out, um, yeah. we yeah. can select the entire town. We can select residential versus commercial. We can select them to get a message via text, email, phone call, or if people have the app, which is really the most important part, to have the code red app in their cell phone. Mm. Let's say, for instance, I I live in uh, I live in Worcester, but I'm driving through Westboro. If you have the app and I we circle an area on the map mm. on the computer, and we say we want to alert everybody in that area, yeah. if you have the app. Oh, It'll trip on your phone. So even if you're oh. not from Westboro, your wow. app goes off and you could help us to locate. Oh, that's fantastic. And you, do, and you, and you may see that person. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Wow, that's, that's really something. So it's that's a really robust uh, system with a, with a lot of redundancy built into it. And it's wow. it's really comprehensive. It starts with the day-to-day. -day we want to make sure, I mean, the goal of an aging community is to stay in your own home and stay healthy. Right. So that's what, the, that's what it's designed for at the beginning, mm -hmm. to make sure people aren't hurt missing, confused, lost, sure. that they can manipulate the phone and right. respond to the call yep. right up through worst case scenario, they're missing, hurt, injured, down, sure. that we can get, uh, we have a delivery system to get the message to everybody to help us. As soon as possible. Sure. Yes. As soon sure. as possible. Sure. And we really could do this if we had to with Code Red in, in less than five minutes to get the message out. And, and by the way, Chief, so this is actually one of the purposes of this show is so that people I bet many people who are watching are as dumb as me and would have had no idea that this was coming, right? So, so if, if, if people, how, how do you go about really getting this information to all of your seniors now? Because that's a, that's a challenge. I mean, we know right. from some of the numbers that we did, sure. how many senior, how many people over 70 are in? 2,000. Like 2,000 people yep. over, mm -hmm. right? All yep. over. How do you do that? How do you so this month on uh, August 28th, the fire department holds a, um, a barbecue. We have a grant. Ah, you just offer people food. Yeah, you feed them. <laughs> this, Why do you think we all is, get along? This right. is that's right. right. You eat together, you break bread together, you're going to get along. <laughs> so we offer a barbecue, and it's usually well attended. It's been an annual thing, and every year we have some platform or message delivery that, that we give to the group. And uh, this is it for this year, yeah. and we're also going to encourage sign-up on that day and photographs on that day. Uh, beyond that, if people can't attend, uh, it is our intent through the assessor's office we bring everybody on board yeah, just to uh, make way. up a pamphlet uh, advertising out the program and put it in uh, tax bills because we know if one's going to everybody else. Right. Right. Everybody yeah. everybody that envelope. And uh, that, that's probably the one of the most reliable ways to, yeah. to get the information out. Plus, we will use social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and uh, who those. knows? We could right. code Reddit out. All right, that. right. We had yeah, to. Yeah. But it's uh, also... Well, We've had some some uh, media coverage so far mm -hmm. with the lieutenant yep. governor. I think we were in the Boston Globe. Yep, yep. Uh, so far, and wow, yep. you know, yeah. it's uh, I'm I'm really flattered because really uh, all I did is work with my staff and and they and they did phenomenal with this. Is just to bring his existing yeah. programs together and it's it's uh it's got some teeth because we're getting phone calls from other other agencies. So oh really? Who are well, really interested? We yeah, can see why. Yeah. I mean, the, well, the lieutenant governor called it the model. Yeah. program for the state so something yeah. that they were looking to to promote yeah so we just it's very we, hope, we hope it's successful yeah so, it's, so I, I have a question so um you mentioned earlier like someone would have like maybe a lifeline right so my mother-in-law has one of those mm. so how does um um would you potentially recommend that someone have both like sign up for the are you okay and and the lifeline and how do those sort of interact with your department so i highly recommend both Mm -hmm. because if you fall down at 2 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. but your are you okay is set to call you at 10 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. that's a whole lot of that's a whole lot of eight hours sure. that you don't want to lay on the floor because phys physiologically, yep. you, you yep. know, things, things, the longer you're down, sure. the, the more prone you are to many medical issues. Right. Yep. Or also if you're injured. Or like if you're bleeding. Yeah, yeah. bleeding yep. or a fractured hip or you don't yep. want to sure. lay on the you floor that long. Sure, stroke, right, right. Yeah. I just had so, a client uh, that happen. They, you know, they, they, they fell down in the, the basement at 4 o'clock and somebody found them at 10. Uh, yes. But yeah. the, it wasn't, the, it wasn't the, the, the hurt, it was the, they just bled to death. Uh, so uh, the lady couldn't get out, yeah. she's in her basement. 
So we definitely advocate for both. So both, because that there's a uh, those are often um, they have a what is it like a gravity sensor, right, mm -hmm. or something. So if you physically fall, the system is calling. It's trying to reach you, the client, and then if they can't get a response, then they are automatically yeah. routing into your teams. Yeah, because that, that also comes with a, a, a the component of the system is has a speaker and a yep. you can talk back and forth yep. with the operator, yep. which is and if they can't reach the individual, then they're calling the Us. fire department, yeah. right, and then you're responding. And if you have a lockbox, right, you guys go yes. and they can oh, and open can the door, right, yep. right, as opposed to I mean, if they can't, obviously you got to take measures to to go after that person. Yeah, all these them. programs are are really designed to complement each other well and great. I, I really I really can't find any negatives. I think like we, we touched on this, one of the big mm -hmm. concerns was the keys. Sure. And are we gonna lose the keys and how are all our keys gonna be out there? Yep. So we invest, it was a lot of money. We invested a lot of money into a system to make sure that we, we right. wouldn't lose the keys. Right. Right. Well, and I think what's helpful for viewers to understand is that it's not like you've got, you know, let's say there are you know, 2,000 people sign up for you, You're not managing 2,000 keys. You're managing the lockbox keys, which yeah. is like a master key. Right. And then that right. gives you access. And so your Except individual you key is on, right? But but that's secure because, like, I'd have my own code and Arthur would have his own code and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. So, no, it's, fan, it's so fantastic. So just as a curiosity, what did that cost you? That's a lot of stuff. What you've described as, as in terms the whole of system software, or just yeah, the lockbox? The system. Uh, we probably have ten thousand dollars into it. Yeah, that's a significant investment. Yeah. That's yeah. a significant but, investment. But, but, but once again, the, think about compared the to one payout. time going through a door, right? In terms of your taxpayer, yeah. going, you know, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. and again, that peace of mind for family not living here, um, that their loved ones are getting a call every day. Um, if they're if they're not picking up the phone, then there's a system of you're going to call that you know yeah. the resources down the line. Um, and then the lockbox piece, and then the code red. I mean, the ability. I love this. I, I wasn't aware that, you know, if you have it on the, if you have your app, which I'm going to mm. do after this, that, um, that you know, people driving through could be like, oh, wait a second, there's a yeah. an elderly woman that's this is missing, yeah. last seen at Walmart, right in Northboro, but she's mm -hmm. a Westboro resident or something. You know what sure. I mean? Yeah, that's wow. So as, as as you, th I'm just curious as you think of it, because obviously you really spent some time thinking about this system. As you think in the future. Mm. Do you think? Can you see it? Anything else? Is there something? Anything else that you that you imagine that should be done? You know that it that it's a resource issue that you just. So I would say that. I would suppose now that you're it just implementing the system, yeah. this is going to tell you that. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think I would wait for the feedback. We uh, you're going to see. We like to run everything. That's yeah. my 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 thing is uh, the 30 day test, and then after 30 days reevaluate, and if it's not working, we'll try something else. But right. we're, we've been we've been running this uh, on myself and the deputy chief for a month, and it's been. <laughs> Pretty flawless. Uh, we don't see any real issues, mm. uh, but we will we will reevaluate. As far as the next step on this, uh, there are if you think about like the money and the time that's gone into just this part, mm -hmm. there are a whole bunch of other parts to a dementia friendly community. And yeah. you know, like mm -hmm. you said, maybe yeah. we are a little a little bit ahead yeah. Uh, yeah. of, oh, of the rest of the system. Yeah. But I think helping helping the other parts of that circle to sure. get to get. Get their stuff together and get up and running is probably the next the next logical step. Well, one of the uh, last our last guest on the show was Ellen Di Paola, and we were talking with her about um, healthcare proxies and personal directives. And I know I I'm assuming I mean your teams don't necessarily I mean. Well, you do get involved with that, but it might be, I mean, that's another component of the Dementia Friendly Initiative that I would see your teams interacting with to understand, does a person, you know, do they have that card? Like, she, so right. for, you know, I have a healthcare proxy, here's who the person is. I have a personal directive, you know, I am a DNR, whatever the case sure. may be. So, so are those kind of documents that I guess someone would fill that out as part of that, um, the, that would go into the CAD system? See, I'm learning sitting in front of you. Yes, that's okay. the information that would go. Okay, that's, perfect. That's something so we're going to add to the list. Great. Yes. This is, this is important. So this dialogue we're having right now is actually helping us to work better together. Because yeah. there are, see, well, I'm already going to add that to the Yeah, it's, it's right. the, 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 the connectivity. So that, now, that's and, fantastic. And I'm just, yeah, once again, I'm, a, I'm an outlander. That's right? okay. I live, from, I live in far away. We work here. I live in Marlboro. You know? the, the, that's right. the other that's borough. The other borough. Yeah, the, the, uh, the borough that cannot be named. <laughs> right. Exactly. Not on <laughs> right. this channel. That's right. That's right. But, but, but um, do, so do you folks do, is it municipal ambulance? Or so the fire department runs the fire service. So yes. that so that whole that whole most piece is a really important it's, piece. Sure. Just yeah. getting because because another thing once again that Shelby and I were talking um, uh, to the person who's done the honoring choices program mm -hmm. about was 
So how do you figure out how to make sure that when you do walk in that door, yeah. that on the refrigerator is the moles form if yeah. they want it. Right, yeah. you moles know? form so or I've got the, you know, a healthcare proxy or I have a personal director. Again, your teams may not be as involved in a personal director because of the acute, like we're gonna kind sure. of, you know, life saving, but if a person has oh, a, you except know. Except if the person's on the floor. Correct. They gotta decide whether they're taking them because they're the ambulance. Right. We do a Correct. similar program, not yeah. that it entails everything, it's yeah. the, uh, fi uh, the vial of life oh, vial. program. Yeah, vial of so life. we have yeah. a, there's a yep. medication vial yes. that yep. the senior center works with people to keep updated with all of their uh, demographics and, and medications and allergies. Yeah. And Thank they you. keep it in the refrigerator in their house so we know to check check for those locations sure. for the, the vial when we get sure. there. Sure, sure. So it would be interesting as these conversations continue, like how, how are those connected? Because maybe also in that should be some of those documents. Some of that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. That's right. Very That's right. interesting. That's really exciting. Wow. This is this is fantastic. Congratulations yeah. to your team Thank you. and all the work that's gone into it. It's um it's it's really so, exciting for Westboro. So 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 and, and I from your perspective as as the select person. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of trying to get how 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 do you get the word out there? You know, how Well, do you I mean I think, it? you know, as I'm sitting here and learning as well, I mean I think that this is also something that we can uh, uh, talk about certainly at one of our meetings. Um, have you as a guest to talk about? I know you're, you'll have the senior luncheon, but you know to continue that promotion. Yeah. Um, I, I think that it's just really important. Oh, the more, a, the more idea. you know, redundancy, no pun intended, is it's right. it's a really important part of getting the message out because because people sometimes but, need to hear things three and four times. Well, and I mean, I don't know. Well, we think we have a big. People, a lot of people watch it. It's massive. Show. Everybody watches the selections yes. meeting, right? Well. <laughs> right, because it's because it's live. <laughs> right, you right. get to see your own neighbors yeah. yelling at each other. Right. It's like, how good is that? You know, it's like right. reality TV. No, but right? it, seriously, well, so we'll we'll uh, I'll uh, talk with the chair and get you on the agenda All for right. sometime in September. It would be, be great. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, it'd be fantastic. So you pick great people to invite. Oh well, there we go. Thank you good. so much. Thank you. Yeah. This was just really terrific. This is great. Well, Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's nice Thank to you. Be here. Now, now, Shelby, do you know who you're going to be inviting next? Uh, no surprise. It's going to be a surprise guest. Yeah. So, you'll be you get to be surprised next month. Um, thank you very much to the chief. Thanks again to Shelby for being willing to do this show, and uh, we'll see you next month on the next installment of my friends Frank and Mary in Westboro. Thank you very much. Thanks.